Hey everybody, this is Neil Fallon from Clutch, and you are watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Neil from Clutch. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm well, how are you? I'm good. I just want to say thank you so much for joining me, and welcome back to Toronto. Thank you. You shared this video about how you're just going to take some time off, a couple of months just to chill out, relax. So what are your plans for that? Well, we'll take a couple of weeks off just to unpack our heads, and then... Um, we plan to get right back into it and, you know, start working on new material uh, with the idea that we'll probably record a year from now. So um, knowing what kind of tours we have, we have to start sooner rather than later and do, you know, boring domestic chores that we've been putting <laughs> off for 18 months. In that same video, you said you're going to have to go on a diet once you're home because of all the pizza and beer that you've oh, been yeah. having. Has that pretty much been the strict tour diet? I try not, you know, every tour at the beginning, I say, this is the tour that I'm going to just eat salads and exercise every day. And like 48 hours into the tour, that goes right out the window. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's tough to eat well, you know, when dinner is, you know, half past midnight and the only places that are open are places that just deep fry everything. Is, and who wants a salad after a rock show? <laughs> <laughs> is there anything you're excited to have once you're home as far as food goes, like a home-cooked meal or anything that Maryland's known for? Oh, let me see. My wife was speaking to me. She asked me what we I wanted, and uh, she's going to make um, pozole, a Mexican stew, which I'm very fond of. Nice. She does very well. And uh, it's that time of year, and, you know, it's soul food. So that's that's what I'm looking forward to. I really liked seeing how on your personal Twitter, your description as far as where you're from just says Wally World. A nice little <laughs> tribute to vacation. Yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, you know, I, it was just one of those late night, you, Choices. Know, you know, epiphanies, you know, where, where, where can I say I'm from and hey, where, where else than Wally World? <laughs> Would you say you're a thrill seeker? Do you like going to amusement parks? Oh, no, I can't stand roller coasters. Really? No, they, they scare the bejesus out of me. And it's not so much just the the ride. It's just I'm always looking at them thinking, like, the, is this um, is this structure sound? Mm -hmm. You know, and this guy that operates it looks like he hasn't slept in his seven days. So, that, so maybe that's just too much to para go. paranoia. <laughs> uh, you know, bumper cars are as about as exotic as I get. Got it. Let's just go back to Psychic Warfare. There's a track that I absolutely love off of it, which is X-Ray Visions. There's something about this whole record where there's such an intense groove on it, and I feel like you can rock out to pretty much every song on this album. So where do you get the energy to put that into every track? Well, um, it's we write sort of a surplus of material, and then we kind of cut off the fat and dilute it. I think over the years we've become more... Um, I don't know, more skilled at writing efficient rock songs, just cutting to the chase. And um, you know, we've been doing this for 25 years, and it's easy to kind of get into a, I, I, hate, I hesitate to use the word rut, but you can get too comfortable with your own tempos and your own groove. Sometimes a little complacent almost. Yeah, it just, it gets too easy sometimes. So to play faster is more challenging. So that's kind of what we're trying to do, just to, uh, you know, keep up, keep up our momentum, our momentum. There's a really cool part in X-Ray Visions where you sing on the drums Gemini on bass guitar presenting Pisces and you go through all the band members mm. and their horoscopes. So what gave you the idea to actually do that? Because it was, is really accurate to as far as what the band's <laughs> backgrounds are. Um, I'm sure Spinal Tap had something to do with it. <laughs> you know, I, and, you know, I, I, I told they had, we had this break and it just seemed like the, it would be appropriate for a spoken word part. And I did it as a goof during the demo period of writing and then I, I said to the guys is this too goofy I mean do you mind that they're like no absolutely keep it it's hilarious and it, <laughs> it kind of we've never done that in a song you know anything quite like that so it's fun and it's uh it's kind of cheeky do you feel like when you're writing for the next record that maybe open the door to add some more cheeky stuff into your songs um I think so I think there's always been a sense of humor um to our to a good number of our songs not all of them uh I think music, for the most part, should be fun. I like the escapism of it, and um, I think we've, we've set a precedent of being able to say really absurd things in our songs and get away with it. So anything goes, really, hopefully. You said how you have the luxury of being a professional liar because you're mm. a storyteller. Yes. 
Um, that's kind of the way I look at it. I said, you do, I have the opportunity to just say, say what I want. And I treat songs like short stories. And I'm certainly not an expert on many of the things that I sing about. But if you sing it with enough conviction, people tend to believe you. <laughs> <laughs> so you, who are the best professional liars? Oh, I mean, my favorite, uh, Tom Waits is probably one of the best as far as storytelling goes in songs. I'm also a big fan of um, Nick Cave and Leonard Cohen. Um, you know, they I, I don't know what degree they draw from their personal lives, but there's it's sort of a tall tale. You can take a truth about your own life and then exaggerate it and make it much more interesting for everybody. And I, do, I sometimes do that, but what I admire about them is their ability to create mood because that's much more of a delicate thing to manipulate lyrically and... I try to look for them for tips. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to do a little quick fire round with you, so you just okay. say whatever comes to mind first. Okay, I'm very slow, so bear with me. We'll do a slow fire. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the first one, who would your dream jam session be with? Um, w would I be included? Sure. Oh, okay. Um, well, you know, I'm fortunate to s that I have guys that I love jamming with, but if they're excluded from the possibilities of that um let me see maybe john bonham bootsy collins keith richards and uh billy preston it's not a bad lineup right there that's a pretty good group <laughs> <laughs> what's the worst job you had as a teenager working at a movie theater i made that so horrible the manager was a jerk, you know. You know how they're you go to a movie theater and they ask for a small popcorn and then they try to jam an extra large down your throat and it's the size of that suitcase. <laughs> That's what I had to do is upsell, upsell. Uh, I only lasted about three weeks. I couldn't okay. take it, and I had to wear a bow tie. Oh, so that was just no not going to happen. No. Who's an artist you'd love to see cover a clutch song? Mm. Um, ZZ Top. And which curse word do you use the most? Oh, there's so many to choose from. <laughs> um, well, probably I realize now that I have a six-year-old son, and he has a tendency to say fuck a lot. So <laughs> I know, Who'd he get that from? Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> so anytime he says it, my wife kind of raises her eyebrows and says, it's all you, my friend. So I've become much more aware, aware of my sailor mouth now that I have a parrot living in the house. <laughs> Well, just to wrap things up, is there anything you want to leave with all of the Clutch fans who will be viewing? Um, well, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting us for 25 years. We wouldn't be able to do that um, were it not for the fans. You know, there would be no reason to continue. So we are eternally grateful. So I don't have to go back to working in a movie theater again. <laughs> and wearing a bow tie. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, just thank you so much for joining me today. Sure, no problem. And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at musicblogia.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See you next time.